Good evening, everyone, and welcome to York City Council's October 19th meeting. We will start out with public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to speak before council on an, any item other than what's on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and call the legislative session to order. Please call the roll. Rivera? Here. Washington? Here. Ritter Dixon? Here. Walker? Here. Nixon? Here. And now, if you're able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. We need to approve the minutes from the last three meetings, September 1, September 29, and October the 5th. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes as distributed? None. Hearing none, all those in favor accepting those three Minutes from those three meetings say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The, uh, the next meeting of York City Council will be on November the 16th at 6 o'clock here in Chambers. And all agenda items are due noon, November the 10th. We'll go ahead into the first item, which is a resolution approving a subdivision. So introduce. That's resolution 103 introduced by Judy Ritter Dixon, whereas site design concept on behalf of Wade Lady and Sharon D. Smith submitted a, sub a subdivision plan for 121 South Beaver Street, proposing to divide the property into two parcels. And whereas the city's officers and engineer have recommended approval of the plan, and whereas the plan is in accordance with the city's ordinances, and whereas the planning commission recommended conditional approval based on various waivers and contingencies, and now therefore be it resolved that council hereby approve said plan. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from council? I don't have any. Anything from the public on this matter? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes, and that's so ordered. Is there? Next, we have a resolution for another subdivision plan. So introduced. Resolution number 103-104, introduced by Judy Ritter Dixon, whereas site design concepts on behalf of Edward and Cynthia Stewart, Stewart submitted a subdivision plan for 900 South George Street, proposing to combine two properties into one, and whereas the city's officers and engineer have uh, reviewed and recommended conditional approval of the plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved, said plan is hereby approved. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from council? No. Is there anyone here from site design? There is. Ah. Tom Englund with Site Design Concepts. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have about the project. Did you have questions? I don't have any questions, but I w if you wanted to uh, speak on it you're more than welcome you did to. a fine job explaining our project i don't know if there's much more i could add okay. unless there's questions all right thank you thank you thank you sir any comments from the public please call the roll rivera yes 
Washington. Yes. Ritter Dixon. Yes. Walker. Yes. Nixon. Yes. And that is so ordered. Next, we have Resolution 105. So introduced. Resolution 105, introduced by Judy Ritter Dixon, whereas Peel and Company submitted a preliminary and final subdivision plan and a preliminary and final land development plan for multifamily residential units at 475 West Philadelphia Street and 145 North Hartley Street. And whereas on September 21st, council unanimously voted to approve resolutions 21 and 21 to uh, 97 and 98 to approve the subdivision plan and the land development plan. And whereas section 509 of the municipal code states that a resolution of contingent approval shall expire and be deemed to be revoked if the financial security agreement is not executed within 90 days. And whereas Peel and Company has requested an extension, now therefore be it resolved that uh, in conditional council hereby approves conditional approval of a final subdivision plan and final land development plan for 475 West Philadelphia and 145 North Hartley Street, and they are hereby extended until June 21st, 2022. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? Do we have anybody from Peel and Company? Okay. I'm Eric Peel with Peel and Company. Okay. Do you have anything you want, would like to share with us or the community? Just requesting to extend the approval to June 21st, just to give me time to time the posting of the bond with recording the plan. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Any comment from the public on this matter? Hearing none, please call the roll. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes, and that is so ordered. Next, we have Resolution 106. So introduced. Resolution number 106, introduced by Lou Rivera. Be it resolved that council hereby denies their certificate appropriateness for the application filed for work at 244 through 256 North George Street as recommended by HARB. Want to move for a vote, Mr. Yes. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from council? Yes. Um, Dylan, can you step up to the microphone and explain? Hello, Dylan Bauer from Royal Square Development Construction. Hello. You have a question or just want yeah, me to explain? There was some confusion in the emails you, you had sent about, uh, about the agenda being wrong. And yes, uh, when it was submitted by uh, the, unfortunately, the architect submitted it as 240 to 256. We were proposing 240 to 250. 252 um. to 256, which is known as Gloria's, is not included in that. And that was made clear at, at HARB. In the demolition? Yes, sir. And, and which addresses are going to be demolished? 240, 242, 246, 248, 250. I have it outlined here. I can supply that if you'd like. Yeah. Is it the uh, buildings basically from the old Cupid's connection up to Gloria's? Yes. Highlighted in green is the picture. Green is the one that's going to be okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sable. No, green, the green one is Gloria's. Yes, sir. May I? I go off memory. Take off the story. Thank you, Mr. Sable. So the, what's illustrated in green is the building that was built in the 1700s. Um, that was the, what we all know in this town is Gloria's. Uh, at one point it was H&R Block, but that is the most most recent tenant. And that was about 2015, I think they were shut down. The building that is known as Station House, which is the next three parcels south, uh, was last known as the Station House Bar. I think that was open in the 50s or 60s. That's unconfirmed. And the last one, which you look on your, your top page, there's a dogleg on the back. That was Cupid's Connection. 
That caught fire in 2016. Uh, my company and my partners, we purchased the Cupid's Connection and Station House building. And then we partnered with Frank Countess from York to combine that with the Glorious building. We've exhausted, at this point, two to three years of uh, determining how we make this work. Um, for those that know my company, we are about historic preservation. We've tried. We've gone to every level we can. We've gone to, we, we worked with Aaron here from, uh, from Warehouse, and we hired Mallory Builders from Mechanicsburg as our contractor. We received a $1.8 million RACP grant. Uh, we, we raised the money for the match. We paid for a full set of plans, just, just for my, and I gotta say it, <laughs> sorry Aaron. But we paid for a full set of plans. They're at the city planner's desk, they're approved. We can't make the numbers work. And then COVID came and we added a 25% material cost. So we're here without options. And our plan is to take what the governor's office has allocated to our city and this building and this project and put all that money into the most historic building of the five, of the four, depending on how you look at it. Um, you'll see on the second page, the back picture. I'm sorry, the second page is actually a sketch of what it would look like when you're heading northbound. The plan though is when you come into our city and you approach the Northern Gateway, you see this building from the 1700s fully restored. When we were in meetings discussing this, there was discussions of, well, you can't afford to do the full repoint job that I know you guys want, so you're gonna have to do 30%. And my partner Josh and I both looked at each other like, that's not what we set out to do. That's not what our partners have asked us to follow through with. That's not what the governor's office approved. So we've tried everything. We've tried keeping the facade. We've tried other options. Uh, at such point, we came to, to Harb on Thursday. Um, unfortunately, I, I wanted to get in front of everybody before. I recognized the new scheduling is a little, is new. Um, so I found out uh, yesterday morning that we were on the agenda tonight. So I frantically <laughs> tried to reach out to everybody here and let you know. So I put these together last evening. Um, you'll see the last page is a picture of the interior, the subject buildings that were asking to uh, raise are, there's no utilities. Uh, some of the utilities that we use today in modern living did not exist when this was last used. There is knob and tube uh, throughout some, but I mean, all of it's cut. There's no utilities at all. So that is what we're here to, to, to request is that, and I, I will say that HARB uh, opened themselves up for uh, communication because they recognize that this is not an easy thing so they, they, I think they, what they said is they recognize your pain and your economic hardship. However, and I totally agree with them as HARB, they need to stand by what HARB stands for. And I did not want to come and set precedent. I think that what HARB, the decision they made was probably right. Uh, but in this case, I'm asking for an overturn because we are out of options. It is economically infeasible to do anything else. So the, so the structures that would be raised is just that small little area behind Gloria's? No, sir, that is gone. And then if you are looking at the top page uh, where you see the green, yeah. everything that's outlined in purple, that's not green. So those three structures to the left, to the north, I mean to the south of Glorious? Yes, sir. And in fact, the building on the, if you would say the west end that borders North Street, the warehouse looking building, yeah. that was already approved by HARB to remove a year ago when we came before city council and it was approved. Um, at that time, we thought, well, we'll remove the warehouse portion, we'll remove the back of Cupid's, the dog leg building there, um, and we'll tear those down, and we'll start new. Well, we got into it, further we got into it, further we got into it. We're at about a million dollar delta, which is hard to believe when you're provided with a grant from the state, but there's six different levels, am I right, Aaron? Six different floor levels in these projects, so just normalizing that is a feat, um, and then for the most part, everything about it is Ancient, so. Well, this is truly a, uh, a matter of uh, economic hardship. Uh, and if we don't reverse this, essentially economic development for this, uh, these buildings won't exist. They won't move forward. Is That's that correct? correct? Yes, sir. Any further questions? Yes, so what are the plans for this? What are the ultimate plans? Oh, <clears throat> that's a good question. What's remaining in the picture, uh, and I'm reluctant to say, because I think we're on TV, uh, Mexitali, the uh, restaurant in East York, is uh, considering the space uh, at, at the highest level we can, we can ask for at this point. Um, Seven-day-a-week restaurant, 
there will be a, uh, what's in place of it, which if you were to turn to your second page and you were to look at that, uh, if you look at the building that's on the, the bottom part, you'll see the orange block. That orange block represents what would become a uh, closed in, uh, like a bar area, that as a patron or a customer, anyone driving by northbound on George Street, you could still see the, the brick structure and the, and the rebuilt uh, fire, the fireplaces that would come off that building. Our goal is to accentuate the 1700s of this building completely. Then on the south end of that, where you see, there's little people here, and I'm sorry to the audience that I can't share this with everybody, there's a plaza. Uh, that plaza is intended to be something like a cherry lane, something that if you work at Leadership York next door, you could take your lunch there. If you go to Mexitali, you could eat your lunch outside. With COVID, outside is everything. Uh, and so when we got into this, we did not have those restraints. And now we do. So we've actually redesigned where we had once a rooftop bar, very expensive actually, rooftop bar that we've moved down to create more of an open for everybody. And that's allowed us to, to make the sense of the numbers of it. And these are the details, but just for the economic hardship side of things, uh, by eliminating the three potential townhomes and the way we were designing the kitchen, the kitchen at its last proposed use when we came before you a year ago was to be on two levels with the dumb waiter that would move food up and down and a lot of really expensive things that were difficult to swallow. And therefore, a lot of it went on to the tenant and the tenant said, I, I can't do this. So by doing this, we do what's called slab on gray construction, pour a concrete pad, put all of your utilities right where they go. It's new construction on the back end, keeping the 1700s, new on the back, new on the south, allowing us to be more effective and then taking any savings we have. And like I said, put that right back into our, I think it's our ninth oldest building in the city. So, so those that have been on council there, Henry, uh, and for, for an extended period of time, are we setting a precedent? Or is this something that we've done in the past? Have we approved? Yes, yeah. we have. We have reversed uh, HARB recommendations in the past. No, I'm not asking that. I, I know we have reversed HARB recommendations in the past because I've been part of that. Um, and I'm, I'm one to reverse HARB, HARB recommendations. My question is, have have we approved demolishing? Yes. Yes, we have. Well, no, I'll, I will speak when it's appropriate. I have some comments on this item. Yeah. I mean, my uh, recollection is we approved the, uh, the rear section of the uh, beauty products place on South George Street. Mm -hmm. I think my question was um, answered yesterday in conversation, but just to, to bring it up again, not necessarily sure if it's comparing apples to apples, but when you have the, the uh, old Philly West Cafe and the demo that was approved by HARB, can you um, share a bit of the comparison between the engineering aspect of it when it comes to the Philly Cafe and George Street and why HARB denied this particular project, but approved Philadelphia's project? At its, at its simplest, I think it's the facade. Uh, in 2003, Fritz Reed was the architect, Susquehanna Real Estate, backed by uh, Mr. Louis Appel, which in some irony, uh, Mr. Lou Appel, his son, is our, our main investor. <laughs> so full circle in 20 years. We reinvested, they, they, Susquehanna Real Estate restored that as this is good building stock, let's save the fronts. They did nothing behind it. And my conversation with Fritz Reed on Monday confirmed that. Uh, he kind of, you know, he was calling me to say, hey, these are some options. And I said, Fritz, I've been through these, this, and the other, and I don't know how else to say it. I don't know how to make sense of this because, the, you know, at this point, we are actually, believe it or not, going to be still thin on how to make the numbers work. And the actual, what's left of the building, of, the, of what I call the building, the, the 1700s building, is probably just the bricks. There's some pockets you can see where the floor used to be, but the floor has been reset. So to answer your question, the Philly Cafe was a, was a safety risk for anyone walking by. I mean, it really was for 1993 is the last time I saw a health license that was active. So since 93, it's been empty. Uh, things could fall off, glass can fall out of windows. And you make a good point, this building is not that, but it is beyond any point of restoring to a level of, of uh, reuse. Uh, mostly because of, like I said, the six levels uh, the back of the building, which you'll see in your pamphlet, is just painted OSB, the cheapest kind of plywood. Uh, we, when we first took it over in 2016, 
I uh, hired some very brave people to remove bags and bags of pigeon guana uh, from the building and uh, a lot of different things that were just, it was just overlooked. But the facade, and, and I should say, we do plan to, re to reuse some of the uh, stained glass, uh, some of the timbers. There's a lot of things in the building that I personally will make sure is, is reused. And I want to be able to showcase that to any customer that does come to Mexitali in the future. Because I recognize the situation I'm in and I'm asking you to be in. So, and if I could real quick, Mayor Helfrich, I meant to get you this. It was Thursday and I just found it yesterday. I wanted to get you this beforehand. I apologize to blindside you. Any other questions by council? Is anyone from HARB here? I am. Ah, yes. Would you like to say some words? I'm Mark Scan. I actually think that was summarized pretty well. Our position, <clears throat> as you all know, focuses on the maintenance and preservation of historical buildings. The buildings they are proposing to demolish are historical contributing members of the historic district. Um, we are not supposed to take into account economic circumstances. We are simply to focus on whether the buildings themselves are contributing to the historic architecture of York City. And these ones clearly are. As I said at our hard meeting, um, as a taxpayer, this is an intriguing idea. But as a hard member, we have to stay focused. And these buildings could be preserved. You know, back when they first came to us about this, um, it was doable. Economics got in the way. That really can't enter into our determination as to whether this goes forward or not. I mean, if you come into York City from the north, you're going to notice the lack of those buildings being there. There's going to there's be a gap. Now, it may be worth it. That's your decision. But from a hard perspective, those buildings are worth saving. So, um, to address your question about the Philly Cafe versus this, I think you summarized it really well. The Philly Cafe was a wreck. It was a, a, a shell that represented danger. We discussed that long and hard because it was historic precedent with that as well. But it was determined that it was a public hazard. So that's why we authorize a demolition of that. This is not the same case at all. This is apples and oranges. So, Does that answer your questions? Thank you. Yes. Anything else? No. Mr. Mayor, I believe you had a comment. Yes, thank you. Um, to go back uh, to your question, Lou, uh, probably eight years ago, maybe Henry and I started having the conversations about what was the value um, of certain buildings and what we would be willing to trade as far as economic development. Uh, and we did we did vote to take down the rear of the beauty um, the beauty uh, um, supply shop. That was a 1915 warehouse that was having a bunch of issues and was not on any kind of main street of the city. Philly Cafe had irreparable damage to the foundations. There was no way to get that building back. There have been similar situations and all we have to do is walk out the front door to see the facades of Washington Hall and all of the other facades directly across the street from us that were saved and built onto in the back. But we have never, ever, in, to my knowledge, taken a building uh, of this value off the, off the face of one of our main streets. Never seen it done. Um, that said, I'm still in agreement that there's a tipping point where we have to talk about economic value versus historic preservation. But there are also some things that we agreed to with the state as far as getting certain funding and, and having a historical district. So we talked, we talked a little bit about this when we first started making the decisions to contradict HARB at all. 
And that was, when are you pushing it too far? And when are you telling the state, we have a HARB just for the sake of HARB, but we're gonna do what we want to anyhow. So I guess my first question is, what is the structural integrity of the facade, a facade that was heavily invested in, in saving, as, as was noted, in 2003? What is the structural integrity of that facade? I, I can say that I, I talking with uh, Mr. Reed on Monday, the architect that built it, the bay windows are cantilevered, which means you have uh, posts coming out from the building it goes into the facade. She's gonna explain a lot better than I do. If you go and do anything like try to save the facade, the, fall, the front will fall off. So it's difficult to say that we can save the front of the building. Structurally, I mean, I've, I've climbed it up and down. It's, it's you know, I, I've been in a lot worse buildings, but there is really no, the back of it has total exposure. Again, pigeons that, you know, you can stop from that. But on the structural side, we did have a structural engineer, Carney Engineering Group, look at it. What was their determination? Um, structurally, the, the existing timbers um, would not be able to take the uh, updated uh, International Building Code seismic or uh, assembly use loadings. Um, so those would have to be updated. The facade, because it's in uh, a specific direction, so the lateral system of the building, um, the facade itself is taking a lot of that seismic load. So removing the back portion, trying to leave the facade, any new additional uh, framing, um, construction, et cetera, would in essence have to be completely independent and support that front facade. It would not be able to stand on its own. Does that make sense? Yes, which is essentially what, what occurred across the street here, Yeah. right? They maintained the facades, they built the structures, and then they kind of tongued them in for, no, for lack of a better, huh? I don't think there's the same kind of bay windows that are cantilevered. The okay. cantilever aspect makes it a whole different animal. Yes. It could be done. That was a state project. This is... Yeah. Private Understood. By state money. Understood. Um, so, while I understand the the um, focusing on the 1790s building, other than getting a courtyard, how is the how are the structures negatively affecting the project? Like, why could you not um, why could you not um, fix the 1790s and then try to sell the other buildings? or wait until the market could bear the, the cost of, of reconstruction? Well, there's a couple answers, a couple things to that. So the layout of the commercial building is the most important. So by our new plan, we've been able to lay out the commercial kitchen, the entrance to the, the bar side, uh, by reducing its, by expanding its footprint north and south, as well as east and west. So the actual commercial unit, which is the most, for us, the biggest commercial revenue driver, is grown. So therefore, they're in the way, to be frank. To save them, we can't do a, an appropriate job of working on the building with them there. And frankly, to sell them, I don't know what you, you could sell them for a dollar and give someone 50 grand, then it still wouldn't make sense. I mean, the, the, the cost to renovate those townhomes, uh, we're looking at three, 400 grand each, and there's three. So it's just, it's, where it's, it's at a point where you can't make sense of this. So explain to me why you can't expand to the west instead of expanding to the south. I'm not quite understanding the... Lot lines. Yeah. We can't, we can't go any further west. We're everything but... I mean, you're, you're, allowed to demo, you're allowed to demolish everything to the west. Which we will. And then we'll have 18 feet for a drive aisle. 20 feet. So you want to... I'm sorry, what... You're going to make that parking? We're not, we're creating the, I don't know what you're looking at. Yeah, what, what exactly are you looking at? I'm looking at the building to the west of the back of the 1790s structure that you are trying to maintain. The warehouse. The warehouse. Yes. So when you demolish the warehouse, what's going there? We will rebuild a, com a commercial kitchen with a banquet space upstairs. All of your mechanicals be on top. Again, from a commercial construction point, by removing that building, which has a six foot basement with dirt floors and stone field walls. We will create a concrete pad where all of your utilities come up in an exact fashion. 
drop in your walls, drop in your kitchen, put in your tile floor, put all your rooftop mechanicals above that, put up your, your outside outdoor dining, and create yourself a commercial kitchen. The former version that we came to city council for and actually got approval from HARB would be to dig out two more feet in the basement using the same footprint, dig out two more feet, and then recreating this new restaurant concept over two stories, which economically we're overspending to begin with. So by eliminating that, we saved a lot of money. By eliminating the three, 400 grand per townhome because of the situation, and not to mention we have a three phase uh, utility pole three feet away from the bay window of the master bedroom in one of those townhomes, which is just ugly and unsightly and unsafe. But MedEd told me there's no way to move it. It's the only pole erected above ground in all of George Street between the creek and country club. There's only one utility pole with electric hanging off of it, and it's in front of this project. So <laughs> even if we could restore these townhomes to something that's, that makes sense on our economic side of things, you're gonna be trying to rent something where you look outside and you're like, I'm not letting my kids sleep here. I mean, we're I'm not exaggerating, it's three feet from the window. So that's, a, and I've tried, for years I've tried with MedEd. And getting a phone call back is a success in that. So I'm still trying to get back to the economic benefit of taking away these buildings. What are you gonna get from that square plot? Mm -hmm. It's a bar and a park? Yes. Our total project cost is $3.6 million. That's what we can spend. If you back out the soft cost, very simply, we have $2.7 million of actual construction value. That's after acquisition, subdivision, soft, the soft costs like your architectural design, engineering, all of that. That's all we will can this, spend without this, getting more money. So if you were, if you were, if council were to vote and I were to uh, sign a vote to overturn HARB, or I mean a, a vote to sustain HARB, are you saying that there would be no project here whatsoever? I think we would try selling it with a rack P granite attached and see what happens. I don't, it's something that I can't put another five years into. I mean, I don't. So if, if you have to keep these three facades or these three townhomes and let them sit there, do you, you would not redevelop the 1790s building? We couldn't. Financially, unless, unless we're going to put at our, our northern gateway an inferior product, one that is not repointed, one that doesn't have new windows, one that doesn't have a new roof, one that doesn't stand out amongst any other city. We're looking for a, a, like a golden star when you come into our city that you see this building. And right now, what, what we, were, we were discussing at Warehouse's office was a 25% about masonry repointing. I want to see the thing top notch. This thing's 300 years old. We want to make sure it looks right. All right. 300, 250? 230. I never was good at math, but that is what our goal is, to accentuate that. And mind you, when this building was built, there was nothing around it. It was, as you know, I mean, it was grass. Yeah. You know, the future York College was just to the west of it. There was nothing around it. And they built those in, I think, 1890 is what we, we su su suspect. Yeah. And just one last question, um, Mr. Skeen. Is there any example, I do not recognize another example of this architecture, this specific type of architecture in the area? Uh, you put me on the spot there. And, and the reason I bring it up is, is just, you know, one of the things that we have that will out, hopefully outlive us all is the architecture of the city of York. It's, it will out, hopefully it'll continue to outlive us all. And, uh, you know, when I run into professors from Georgetown University that bring their students up here to see our architecture, I know that the architecture in the long term uh, is more important than a lot of short-term decisions that we as humans make. So, uh, One, 147 East Philadelphia is a perfect example of the same bay window that we have where we are now. It's deteriorating East. like crazy. Well, right uh, just east of Miller Pool and Lord on the north side of East Philadelphia Street, uh, 147, and then, yeah, it's deteriorating. I mean, I've toured it, it's pretty terrible. but. Yeah, but that has not been restored in any way, right? Not at all. Yeah, this is, we don't, we don't know how much money was put into restoring these, do we? I, I wouldn't want to know. Okay. okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. I appreciate the time. Yep. I do have some questions. Okay. Uh, my first question is, the, um, the, uh, the liquor license. So I, I think council voted 
regarding liquor licenses and not approving any more in the city. Uh, how do you plan on getting that liquor license? I believe that's correct. The answer is this is a brewery license. So Mexitali having a brewery license is allowed to have five satellite locations. I don't know if that's what council meant in 2018 when they voted that way, but I think it was 19, but um, I'm aware of that decision. I, I don't think it's the same. I'm sorry, but there, I, Mr. Solicitor, there was no vote. There was a statement by council, but was there a vote? Either way, it's a brewery license, so uh, it's a repeat. And they will not be brewing in this location. It's going to be a satellite of their existing on East Market Street. My second question is, if, if, if indeed council uh, votes to decline Harv's recommendation and, and approve yours, how soon are you going to, how soon, what's your immediate plan? Sure. Well, we remain in a holding pattern until we hear your decision, and that's mostly because for Warehouse, they, they're not going to spend any more time on this until we know the direction. Upon your decision, I believe the idea is to go back immediately and start uh, continuing the plans that we have, uh, at which point we'll be checking in with HARB, making sure they're aware of what our plans are, because we will be revisiting HARB as we go with our new plans to make sure it's in line with what the city and HARB is looking for. Um, our construction start date should hopefully be early spring on earthwork, trying to do our demo right at the end of cold weather, uh, and hopefully lumber prices and everything will continue to go down for us and be in our best favor. Opening and uh, starting our construction in March, ending end of the year, and hopefully eating a burrito in uh, March of April, March uh, 23. My last question is, how do you engage the black and brown businesses to be able to work on this project as well? Uh, as a developer, I have limited. I, we hired Maori Construction and Warehouse as a design firm, uh, and then Mexitali is my tenant. Um, I have been working hard to like familiarize myself with more uh, black and brown minority contractors in the city, and I've been pretty, actually pretty successful with it. Um, we are, as a RACP, required to get three bids for all trades, so I think that would be you know, one thing that's easy and obvious to do for the contractor, Mallory. And my company's not able to build it because my partner and I, Josh, are actually owners of the company as well as the real estate, which is no-go, which is why we hired uh, a company from Mechanicsburg to build it. Yes, sir? I was wondering why you chose it. It's not that I wanted to, but... They make us follow the rules. I understand why. Anything else? Or we can take this to the... Thank you, Mr. Thank you for your time. Thanks for letting me call you everybody yesterday. And... All right. Any further discussion from the public on this item? Yes, sir. Yes, or yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> Good evening, City Council. I'm Stephanie Seaton resident of the city of York, chairperson for the Human Relations Commission. I would just uh, ask council to extend these same considerations to override hard recommendations to the residents who live in our city who can't afford to make repairs to their facades because of the hard regulations. They too face economic hardship and they don't have a million dollars, let alone what it costs to make the facade. So I would just ask that these same considerations be extended to our city residents who are homeowners and need to make repairs, but because of the regulations of HARB, they can't afford to do so. I would also ask that if a project is moving forward in new construction, that it would be accessible and ADA compliant and not at that point then try to stand behind HARB regarding the accessibility aspect in the ADA requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Okay, so just to be clear, um, Jason, if they vote yes, that means they um, agree with the denial. If they vote no, then they're overturning yes. the denial. Okay. Rivera? No. Washington? No. Ritter Dixon? No. Walker? Quick question. I know. <laughs> it's really out of order. Okay. Because this has the entire address, so I was just, there's two different things. 
Are we cool on the address, Dylan? Uh, the address of the subject properties in question is 240 to 250. The application does read to 240 mm -hmm. to 256. Gloria's, the 1700s building, is 252 to 256. So, so in I'm sorry, it's 244. Okay. Yes. So what we have on the resolution is 244 to 256. No, George, is that correct? That is what's on the resolution. That is the project. And I think it was erroneously submitted because that's the project address. It is only 244, 246-248, which is the middle property, and 250. So three parcels with addresses 244, 246-248, and 250. Okay, so 246 through 248 is what you said, and then 250. Correct. North George. So are you suggesting that the resolution reflect that? Yes. Well, it should. Yes. So then mm -hmm. we would need to do... Um, we have to amend it. We have to amend well, it. Well, I think that that was... Mr. Barry, because it says in the harm denial that it's for work to be done at 244 to 256. I, Work's being done at all those properties, right? Yes, I pulled the application. That is true. Aaron has a, has a good point. I pulled the application to understand what was submitted. That's why, because I saw it and I thought this is wrong. Um, she makes an excellent point. The back of 256, what we call the warehouse, that is to be demoed also. So there is demo at the location that is 252-256, but it is only the rear portion as indicated in what's uh, provided to you. Is, is there anything else that they reviewed that is, hasn't been talked about? No. Okay. Mr. Solicitor, are we okay with what's on the resolution or, or, or is, should we? Um, yeah, what was submitted? Just, just change your mic. Right yeah, what was, what was submitted to HARB was uh, 244 to 256 North George Street. Um, and they applied to demolish the properties 244 to 250 North George Street. But the whole project is 244 to 256 North George Street, which is probably why it's sent to HARB as that whole project. So, I mean, I, I'm comfortable with the wording as it is. I understand. Now, I, now that I hear it, I was probably wrong in saying they got it wrong. So. Okay, so we're still okay, and we're in the middle of a, a vote. <laughs> no. Nixon? No. And that is so ordered. Next, we have resolution number 107. Resolution number 107, introduced by Lou Rivera. Be it resolved that council hereby author, uh, approves a certificate of appropriateness for the application filed by Ger Teresa Janescu for work at 31 South Queen Street, M&T Bank for work at 21 East Market Street, and uh, Carlos Fuentes for work at 119 Ficus Way. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion by council? Hearing none, any discussion by the public on this matter? Hearing none, please call the roll. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes. Next, we have final passage of bills. And that is bill number 52. So introduced. Oh, that would be a move for final I'm, passage. I'm sorry. That's OK. <laughs> move for final passage. Second. And that's a bill introduced by Judy Ritter Dixon at the September 21st meeting. That's amending the 2021 budget by appropriating expenditures in the amount of $25,000 for education opportunities protect ch to protect children from exposure to lead. Any discussion? No. Anything from the public? Please call the roll. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes. Next is final passage of bill number 53. 
Move for final passage. Second. And that is bill number 53, and that is amending the 2021 budget in the amount of $6,067.06 for the HIV prevention program. And Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes. Next, we have bill number 54. Move for final passage. Second. And that is a bill amending the Article 730 Neighborhood Improvement Ordinance to include enforcement powers to the Bureau of Permits. Inspectors increase days to file an appeal from 10 to 14 days and establish penalties. Are there any questions? Anything from the public? Please call the roll. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes. Next we have new business, which are introduction of some bills. Item number nine. So introduced. That's bill number 56 and that's introduced by Sandy Walker, a bill making an appropriation for money not otherwise appropriated in the amount of $22,000 to fund utility costs paid out of the recreation fund. Uh, another MNOA for $100,500 to fund utility costs paid out of the municipal sewer fund and $199,874 to fund costs paid out of the general fund. Very good. And that will sit until our next meeting when we will consider it. Next is uh, introduction of bill number 57. So introduced. And that's bill 57 introduced by Queen of Washington. It's a bill amending the 2021 budget in the amount of $60,000, which will be used to outfit six vehicles with necessary emergency response equipment for the Department of Fire and Rescue. And once again, that will sit until our next meeting for consideration. Item number 11, which is bill number 58. So introduced. Bill number 58, introduced by Queen of Washington, a bill amending the 2021 budget for the police department according to approved modification for the enhancement of law enforcement operations. And we will consider that at our next meeting. Before I ask council if they would like to consider the uh, items number 12 through 19 for a consent agenda, is there any one from the public who is interested in pulling an item for further discussion? Hearing none, council, is there any interest in pulling any item from those for further discussion? Uh, I'll need to pull items 13, 14, and 15. 14 and 15, very good. Oh wait, I'm sorry. 14 and 15, my apologies. Not 13. Not 13. Very good. Mr. President, um, I, I think, is this, this include 12, the members, uh, the new members of the Human Relations Commission? Yes. Um, can we pull that so that at least we can have them introduce themselves? Well, we could certainly even do that afterwards, couldn't we? Oh. Mm -hmm. After the vote, mm -hmm. once they're in. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go from... Uh, uh, is, is there a motion to consider a consent agenda for items 12, 13, 16, 17, 18, and 19? I apologize. <laughs> I knew there were three items that I needed to pull, but I need to pull 17 as well. 17. Yes. Okay, let me rephrase that. Is there a motion 
to consider a consent agenda for items 12, 13, 16, and 18 and 19. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda for items 12, 13, 16, 18, and 19. I make a motion to approve Second. those items. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Oh, I'm sorry, who seconded that? Okay. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. Nixon? Yes. And those are so ordered. We'll come back to item number 14. So introduced. I'm going to still keep these uh, resolutions number sequential. So uh, item number 114, I mean, uh, item number 14 will be resolution number 110. And. Okay, um, resolution number, oh no, uh, this is the one that uh, uh, Mr. Rivera, uh, you were asked, or I have used for the introduction of that uh, because okay. Council, Councilwoman Walker uh, is yes. affiliated with that. Yes. So it's, it's cool to have you introduce that. Yes. Okay, so that is uh, resolution number 110 introduced by Lou Rivera uh, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor is authorized and the controller is authorized and directed to execute documents necessary to provide school crossing guards for the York City School District for the year 2021 and 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion from council? Anything from the public on this matter? Please call the roll. Okay. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Abstain. Reason for abstention? Employment, York City School District. All in favor of abstention say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Nixon? Yes. Next is resolution 111. And uh, Mr. Rivera, if you could um, motion to uh, a motion to introduce yeah, motion. on that one. Motion to introduce. Okay. And that's resolution number 111 introduced by Lou Rivera. Now, therefore, it be resolved the mayor is authorized and the controller is authorized to execute documents necessary to implement the contract of services proposed by all city management services for the 2020 2022 school year for school crossing guards. Any further comments from council? Anything from the public? Please call the roll. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Epstein. Nixon? Reason for abstention? Employment. Okay, yeah. Thank you. All in favor of her abstention say aye. 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 Opposed? Very well. Nixon? Yes. And lastly, we have resolution 113. So introduced. And is this agenda item, is this a stick and move? Wellspan. Wellspan. Well well the Wellspan. Okay. Whatever number it is, I'll give it a number. It, All right. It so should be 113, I think. I, 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 I don't know it's not going to be, but that's okay. Uh, is there a motion to introduce by short title? 
So moved. Is there a second? Second. All opposed, uh, all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Res uh, introduced by Queen of Washington, a resolution authorizing a memorandum of an understanding between the York City Police Department and Wellspan Health to provide three hospital resource officers at Wellspan Health City of York facilities. Move for a vote. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? I have a question. Do, will yeah. this take th three of our officers off the street? Well, look, I if believe they, if they go to the hospital, do, do they come off of, you know? Uh, I believe Lieutenant Lentz is here. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Lentz, uh, York City Police. Uh, to answer your question, ma'am, yes, they, uh, they will come off the street. We uh, are already uh, allocating for those resources by sending three additional off uh, officers mm -hmm. to the academy. Um, so effective in January, three of them will be, it'd be two officers and a supervisor will be designated for uh, this position. So does that mean that the, the net stays the same for the city of York? Uh, we should be plus three because they're, the Wellspan is funding these three officers. Okay. There'll be those three, but we'll still have the 100 uh, or whatever it is. Yeah, I believe we're currently we're at 97. You're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're at what now? I'm sorry to hear. I believe we're at 97. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Anything from the public? Please call the roll. Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Abstain. Reason for abstention? My position is serving on the board of directors of um, Wellspan? Yeah, Wellspan York Hospital. Okay. Regional, central region. All those in favor of her abstention, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and, okay, and Nixon. Yes, that's so ordered. Are there any general comments by council before we adjourn. Um, that's oh, I apologize. I forgot about that. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so the uh, the members of uh, the new members, please come forward. Good. <laughs> All right. So, are you ready to take your oath of office and give your life to the city of York? Yes, the second part Yeah, don't be like me. Um, all right, let's see here. All right, I just need you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. All right. I. I state your name. Sylvia Kelly. Carla Christopher Wilson. Do Karen solemnly Crosby. Affirm. Do solemnly affirm that I will support, obey, and defend. That I, that will, I will support, support obey, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties. And, and that, that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Of my office with fidelity. Thank you and congratulations. Turn it back. Can I borrow your pad there? Because I, I just need all of them to sign. I, I know you need something to, um, to uh, break this up. And then you two ladies here, Carla and Karen, if you guys could come on and sign your oaths of office. And while you all are doing that, I want to thank you on the part of the city for your volunteerism and commitment to the city. 
volunteers on all of our boards and authorities are so valuable and important to the functioning of this city. So thank you very much, all three of you. All right, now, is there any comment from council on, in general? Hearing none. Is there any, anything from the mayor? Uh, yes, thank you. Wanted to make uh, one last call for applications for our American Rescue Plan grants. Uh, you can uh, apply, you can email us at ARPA York at yorkcity.org. The deadline is Friday, Melanie, at 11.59 p.m. 11.59 p.m. on Friday. Um, so this is going to be the first round of some of the money that we got from the federal government. We're looking at uh, potentially deploying about $5 million this time. Uh, there's going to be, hopefully, if you can count on Congress, there's going to be more money coming uh, in the February to April period where we will talk about what other money we can deploy into the community. But you have, if you have uh, plans uh, on how you could help either with our children in this community, help reduce violence, help with job training, uh, if you've got business ideas, there, there's a pretty wide variety of things uh, that you can apply for. And uh, we, we hope to get your applications. And we've got a great committee. Thank you, committee members, uh, for helping to uh, review these grants. And by the time we present the budget at the third Tuesday in November, uh, we will be presenting those ideas that the, uh, that the administration uh, committee has recommended and that the administration supports. And then on a more frivolous and fun side, Sunday is the Halloween parade. We are having a Halloween parade, yay. Still be careful. COVID is scarier than anything else. Quick question for the deadline for ARPA. Um, someone asked me, and then I thought about it, and I looked at Lancaster and Harrisburg. Their surveys are still open until the end of this month. Is there a particular reason why you decided to move through it so fast? Uh, well, we're definitely not moving through it fast. Most cities have already deployed a lot of their money uh, across the country. Um, and uh, we that's, want, I mean, your opinion. I'm saying like, no, I looked at Lancaster and Harrisburg. Being and, on weekly yeah. calls with the mayors from across this country uh, and the Treasury Department, many cities have deployed their money already without doing surveys or anything like that. Uh, so mm -hmm. so that's it, it's definitely not my opinion. It's, it's from my experience. Okay, so um, um, as a follow-up to that, then I would request, um, I would like to know the cities that have done and what they're doing, some type of report to council so that um, I can see in comparison to what you're saying, because when I checked Lancaster's website, they still have surveys open until October 30th for input in Harrisburg, I believe it's October 23rd. Surveys or application processes? Surveys for input. Okay, so, yes. so we are having, um, we are trying to deploy our money because we've got serious, serious issues in the city of York. We've got people dying and young people that need help and people that need jobs. And we believe that it is appropriate to deploy part of this money right now. And we will have more money to deploy later. So that is a decision that has been made by the administration. Okay. And so I'm requesting for the information that you just stated in regards to the multiple cities throughout the country. Can we get a report? of those cities and what they're doing. It doesn't have to be all of the cities, but I would like to see something. Uh, your request is noted. Okay. How many applications have gone through? What did we say today? 25. 25 plus a whole bunch more that are likely to be coming by Friday. And those are split. Split. Yeah. There in, there's internal application, and there's also external applications. So what we've asked our departments to do is to also submit uh, requests through the committee so that the committees can review them. Anything further? No. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.
Thank you, and thank you for your time. I just wanted to thank the administration and York City Council for the appointment of our three additional commissioners to the Human Relations Commission. And this brings our commission to a full complement, and we're very excited about that. And our complement represents our very diverse community. We're in a capacity building phase, and we are excited to continue this important work. Combined, we have over 200 years of civil rights experience on our commission at this time. And we believe that we're able to move our ordinance forward with the group of people that we are currently working with. And we want to use it to ensure equal opportunity in our city and set the standard for all of your county. So we thank you for, for these appointments that you made. Wanted to announce that the City of York's Human Relations Commission tomorrow, we will be having a critical race theory presentation from 6 to 7 p.m. It will be via Zoom, and you can call the commission at 717-846-2926 to register for that event. We also welcomed a new investigator, Mark Unger, to the commission. So we are processing complaints of discrimination. If you feel that you've been discriminated against, you can refer individuals to the office at 717-846-2926, or they can go on the City of York's website and access the Human Relations Commission. So we just wanted to put that information out there that we are up, we are servicing the citizens of York. We are grateful to the administration for the additional resources that have been um, given to the commission to continue the work that we're doing. So thank you, council members, for your support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question for you. Yes. What is the um, timeline? Like if someone was discriminated against two years ago, can they still file a complaint? Um, per our ordinance, uh, you have 180 days from the act of harm mm -hmm. to file a complaint. Um, with EEOC, you have 365 days, so it's a little longer if you go to the federal government. But within the city of York and the state of Pennsylvania, it is 180 days from the act of harm that you can file a complaint. Thank you. I just You're wanted welcome. you to make that clear for people. Yep, so if something watching. happened and it was less than six months ago, mm -hmm. you can still file a complaint. And we do have an intake support specialist to accept the calls as well as an investigator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe this gentleman had comments. Yeah, yeah. I'll come to this council meeting today because um could you uh, state your name please yeah my name is victor manuel bruno and are you a resident of the city yeah i'm a resident of the city yeah i come to talk about um the rabbit transit company today because they're operating in um they're they're operating in the downtown of our our of our city and i was injured on the bus and they said the video was they say the video was there to help us, but yet they withheld it. They withheld it from my doctors, and I'm on now. I'm on these. I'm on these muscle relaxers. I I injured my lower part um, January 18th, 2018, and um, I went. I ended up going to the doctors that Friday and that Saturday. I talked to Carl Young who who called me, he said he was so sorry for me that they was gonna be there for me and help me and so, but that never, um, that never came about. They, um, they said they had this insurance company called Gallagher and Bassett. I spoke to a guy, Jason, who said, don't worry about nothing, we'll be there for you and stuff like that. I've been, you know, I've been injured over three and a half years now. Uh, my back swells, it spazzes. It leaves me unable to work. Before that, I was working at Wolfgang County, Wolfgang Candy, next to the state police barracks, and I was working 60 hours a week for like four or five months. I decided be, they cut the hours to um, eight-hour shifts, so going way out to Loganville was just going to cost too much money for back and forth, and so I decided to find something on the bus route, and I figured you know, they, um, that if something would happen to us on the bus, there would be a safety precaution and stuff like that. But it's like I've been getting the runarounds and um, 
I, they had a um, they had a meeting a year a year ago where I talked to the um, this is when I was staying at the um, the mission I was staying there for a couple years and I'm staying at a, a friend of the family's house right now where he was like where he told me um, that he would get me a place he would help me out I, I um, and it's I talk, then next thing I know, a couple of days later, I talked to somebody else. We're not doing nothing for you. You know, they, they discriminated against me. They I'm not me. sure, excuse me, sir. I, I'm not sure that uh, Rabbit Transit is part of the city. Yeah, and, but the, uh, fact that it, the fact that it is governmentally funded, it's governmentally well, protected. Do you have an attorney? It, have you uh, obtained an attorney to try to settle this thing? Uh, uh, You're coming to, uh, to city council. We have absolutely no yeah, power. Yeah, it, it's, it's got to be known that like, because they're like, they're running in the center of our city and sir, we're allowing you them hear? to injure people yes, did without, you hear what without I, any did you hear what recklessness. I said, sir? That we have absolutely nothing to do with rabbit transit. We have no power over them at all. That's an authority that's completely separate from the city. I wish, yeah, we, could, operate, I wish we could help you. I wish but it we could operates do something. through our city. I'm sorry. I just said there's nothing that we can do for you on this. I apologize, but there is nothing. I mean, our hands are tied because we have no authority over them. If it's uh, well, also, who should if I, it's a who legal issue, to, sir, because... sir, if it's a legal issue and you don't have any representation, you might want to try mid pen legal services because they can hook you up with a, a, an attorney at no cost. So if you want that information, I can write it down for the you. The thing is, this business shouldn't be operating in our city with such oh. with such you know okay. naive moves. Thank you, thank you for speaking to us, and. Um, and what Madam Vice mayor, President, can I, can will I, can uh, give the mayor you uh, say something about that, sir? Yeah, we spoke with you two years ago yeah, and and you, gave you the same you advice said you that was the vice president. You never called the me. vice president. You never called okay. my phone. Yeah, we did talk again. This is it. The meeting is adjourned. Uh.